Very well everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Chain Decos. Last time we have done a lot more on the reward board. We went back to the Fewer Woods and did a lot of things there. Uh, some things in the Flower Field of Perpetua. We have now an 89 chain, which means we have just grabbed the 80 and 88 Grim Grimoire Shards. We still have to cash those in. As you can see, we have two level up stars for everybody. But we'll wait. It's not time yet. Today, as I said last time, we're gonna go back to... Hermitile. Because we have a side quest here. Hey, are you okay? Where am I? Oh, interesting. Red air and a light tan. You could be from the sun, but you don't look like you do much outdoor work. Are you from Umbrella? What? Did you see that gnarly wave? Took me right out of the boat. But I guess I landed where I wanted to get to anyway. This is the island with the infamous clan, isn't it? Something like that. Something like that. You're funny. Well, I got a job for you. You and your people, that is. It's about the seven true kings. Could you talk a little slower? I don't understand. Slower? Sure I can. Do you know what just caused this wave that stranded me here? Why Lord the Kraken, the sixth true king? With his breathing, he creates the tides. Well, you already know that. Every child knows that. His arms stretch out to all the oceans, and once he moves them, a tsunami is created. Crazy, isn't it? Guess so. Enough to chat. So, when do we leave from Niza? Niza, the old university. That's why I'm here, silly. I want you to accompany me to Niza so I can learn more about the past of the true kings. I want to take a look at to I want to too take a look at Asnadiel the Dragon, the second true king of the world. Yikes. You need to know that I'm a biologist from Jamarina. But I'm sure I already mentioned that. I tend to repeat myself. Oh, do you actually want to know more about the seven true kings? Sure you do. Sit down. I'm sure this will take half a day. So um Sorry, my mind drifted. Where was I? He said we should leave right now and not to keep talking. That sounds like me, so let's get going. But where to? I thought there was no way to get to the sunken city. I already told you, through the organic grottos. I know the way. Well, the only problem is a beast that blocks my entry into there. Well, that's not my problem anymore. It's yours. Let's go. And so now we have a quest, Gates to Niza. So we'll go back to our flying airship. And it does, it wants us to go there. And so we'll go. And right there are their own fields, if I remember right. Yeah, because this is Farm Sport, this is Basil. Out their own fields we go. Where exactly are we going here? Map. Over there, alright. Yeah, Organic Rotos. So we'll take flight, and we'll reach the central quadrant. Which is not this one, this is the bottom center. This is the center? No, it's the top center quadrant. That you have to reach. This should be in a place where we can land. I believe it's, yeah, it's right here. So we're gonna land, hopefully. We've been in here before. We couldn't do much, though. Now that we're a little stronger, we might be able to take on the various beasts that are in here. And if we're not stronger, we can still get two levels. We have those in the back. Yeah, see those things there? Those are enemies. We'll have to fight very soon. I think once we jump here. Oh, they're not? Okay, I was about to say, are they not gonna fight us? Alright, weak to earth, huh? Okay, we'll begin with an agility as per usual. And we'll start with this. See how much damage we do. Okay, 1, 3, let's see. Attack buff. That ain't good. They are quite strong. Weak to earth, though. I could spam this. But. That'll help more in the long run. Oh, wow. They do a lot of damage. Okay. But we should be able to handle it. So, first of all. Remember, they have an attack buff. So, they do a lot more damage than usual. But we still have to throw our defensive buffs and stuff, so it'll be much better once we do. Can I steal from these guys? 
No. So you might, we might as well try to take one out. So we have less damage coming our way. Okay, see, that's much better. Uh, we'll do summon attack because I need to lower the overdrive anyway. And we got rid of one. Great. You know what? Debuff. Uh, we're going to do an armor break. There you go. Now. Buff. And Sienna go to town with a Dragon Fang. Which didn't do much, unfortunately. How about this? Nice. We can now handle these enemies. Which only give three SPs, unfortunately. They suck. Where does this go? Does it just go back? No, it leads to this chest. Oh, there's also a treasure. A, yeah. Buried treasure, huh? What could it be? Is it in here? Let's go back one sec, because there was another path. I haven't checked it. Well, some sort of spamming the button. See if I can find the hidden treasure. Yeah, there's this path here. Please, no enemies. Thank you. Hmm. It's most likely at the top of the screen. Alright, we'll see what we can find. It's not in here. And it's not here. Okay, wait. You know what? I think it's on that... See that, like, oval at the top? That's kind of between two corridors? I think that's what it is. There are two arrows pointing at the top of the screen. I bet that's hidden in there. How do I get that? Oh, it's a secret passage later. Alright. Alright, it's fine. Thankfully... In this, in this area, there aren't a lot of enemies. There's a few. But not a lot of mandatory ones, thankfully. Yeah, th that item is always there, by the way. That collectible. Just there to show you that there's indeed a secret path. We'll have to fight these guys. There's no way out of here. Without fighting them. So, how about this? I think we need to get rid of the shaman as soon as possible. We'll play it safe and use the Requiem here. Because they're probably going to do some heavy damage here. Poison on Sienna. Alright, well, it's fine. Uh, light Claimer, sure. How about this? Attack buff on everybody. Ow. Obviously, we're going to throw that on. Another Yokozuri. Maybe a Petal Storm. We'll switch out. We'll, we'll, we'll do this. It's always nice. Again, it is the most... Possibly the most useful ultra in the game. Debuff everybody. And... Even though it's gonna put me out of overdrive, yes. Alright, that doesn't do any damage. And, uh, you know what? Actually, you're probably gonna finish this fight. Yep. That's how we win. Some skills are leveling up. I should check on that. That's how we get this chest. With a weapon for Glenn. That's yeah, the next tier weapon. So nice. We got that for free. We don't have to buy it anywhere. From any merchant. Oh, I have to go to a merchant. And sell... Well, we'll do it after this is done. Because I have to sell all the crap that I've been finding from all these enemies. Alright. So there's only one path, really. And I... Again, I bet... Tre the treasure is somewhere around here. We'll have to fight these guys first. Alright, let's see. We're gonna go Dragon Fang immediately. This time... Okay, ow. Yeah, Terra, why not? Boom! Play a little safer. Spine is power. 
Let's see. Come on! It may be more than that. And you kill this guy? Not quite. And we got poisoned. Uh, we can't do anything here. Next up is Sien. I'm going to defend. So I can hopefully kill the wizard. Good. And we're gonna switch over. And cross slash. For big damage. Boom. And I think you're gone, sir. Nice. Uh, wait, I thought we were gonna check for the treasure here. It's not here. If it's not here... I bet it's somewhere in the secret passage. It's like in here. You'd think they put it here, but no. Maybe it's in this area? It's not here either? I'm not leaving the screen before I find it. I mean, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not leaving the screen until until I find it. Does before I find it make sense? Yes, it does. Like I'm pretty sure it's gonna be around here. Where is it? All right, let let's think about this. What if it's like here? No. What if it's down here? Uh -huh. I want to leave no stones unturned, or in this case, no hidden treasure unturned. Right. So, we're going to go all the way back. And, oh, we're about to reach the quest destination, and actually we're going to reach a fast travel point, which will be incredibly useful. Because we don't have to do this track every single time we want to access this place, and we will have to access it multiple times over. Alright, down. How about, what's this direction? What's going on in here? Gemstone jerking, don't we already have one of those? Yes. So, you can get another. Because, Rob, you're the only other person other than um, Tom K that uses it anyway. Uh, there's a thing down there. I can loop around this area to get it. Also, dragon mail. For you have it, so you can have another one. All right. And what we get? Crap. Very. Useless crystals. Yeah, there's only a bunch of crystals that are useful. All the others are kind of meh. And we found the fast travel location. Which, it wasn't the one we saw last time. When we activated a lever. It's another one. So that means there's at least one more. Actually, there's a fair amount of them in, this, in, in, in the organic grottos. And we have Madeline again. The vicious fiend I was talking about lies ahead. It's too strong even for you, but if you fitted this berry, you might stand a chance. I developed this berry for strong monsters like that. It weakens their blood, their body by a lot. I don't know why I read blood, but I guess. Oh, there's this dude. So, first thing you want to do, well, I'm going to go ahead and Drunken Master. Sienna, we're going to throw that item we just we were just given. The Concubine Berry, a berry that weakens certain monsters' bodies. Do this! If you don't, you don't stand a chance against this guy. It will annihilate you. Also, he just... That thing just did 88,000 damage. This guy has 90k HP. So yeah, if you don't do that, you essentially stand no chance in killing it normally. I don't think it's even possible to kill it normally. You can fight more of these guys later. But yeah. I don't think there is a way to do to do it without that without that berry. Because he just deals like crazy damage. 
We should just uh, stick to damaging skills here without even trying to buff too much. Like, we'll switch and do that. Yeah, there we go. Oh, it needed to do 2,000 damage anyway. Right. So we should probably go back and tell her that we did it. Good job, let's move on. Okay. So there's another buried treasure here. However, there's a lot to explore. A lot. So there's an entrance in the water there. However, if you go this way... And it's empty, okay. So there are two versions of this room. Also, we just grab this. One version of this room is completely devoid of enemies, for, with the exception of that guy. That is the elite version of the monster we just fought. So we cannot go that way, because he's protecting that path. But we can go everywhere else, because no other monsters is in here. Also, we just found another sacred water, which means we can get another class. Nothing over here just yet, but I believe we have to go to this spot later to recruit a character. It just hasn't spawned quite yet. We'll have to come later in the plot. However, if we go up here... Usually, the other version of this room is populated by those guys we just fought. But you either get the elite version, or you get all the normal ones. They are pretty much everywhere. And they're not that hard to kill once you get access to infinite of those berries. But we can grab the fast travel location now. And we find this. And it looks like an item will fit in here. There are six items that would fit in there. And those are... Those are pause game stuff. You can find six tablets in pause game by defeating powerful enemies. Powerful optional bosses. And if you collect all of them and put them there, you can face these games super boss, essentially. It's not a treasure chest, but we can't do anything with that. If we go back into the room... See? Now it's a bunch of these guys, they're all around. All over the place. The elite one is actually guarding a class emblem, I believe. So if we can defeat those guys... We'll be able to access... Because the thing is, if there's normal ones are there, the elite one is not. So you can defeat like a couple of normal ones and you can access the class emblem that the elite would otherwise be protecting. Now we go around here, there are a couple of treasures we can get by just swimming around and using those bubbles to access other parts of the area. This is a mechanic you actually haven't been officially introduced to yet. There's a side area that introduces you to this mechanic. But we haven't been to, to that one yet. Instead, we'll just get it here. And the elastic wing. So we just need the one chest that contains an equipment. Now, how do I get that? That is another story. Hmm. That's the buried treasure. It might be this way. Yep. Phantom cloak. We're gonna go ahead and clip it to. No, you already have one. So. Yep. You take it, Len. The question is, where's the buried treasure? Is it over here? No. Let's see. Again, I'm not going to leave until I find it. It could be... No, there's no walkable area over there. I think it's above. Either in this... In this area over here, or... I think it's in this path somewhere. Parallax extender is nice, I guess? 
Anyway, we'll go to this quadrant. That's the top quadrant. There's not much in here. At least in this path. So we're going to proceed to the top right. And we find... Goblins. Dark talk gibberish. And won't let us pass. Can't do anything there. We'll have to come back later. Once we get the, uh, the ability to get in there. And then we'll be able to go do some cool stuff. Fortunately, we can right now. I need to find that freaking treasure. I thought it was... There it is. Okay. Crit damage up. That's nice. Right. So we can go up, but we can also take this path instead. See where that leads. More crystals. Sure. Okay, let's see. Unique monsters. If you're lucky, you can find unique monsters in the west of Ugarna. It's an alpha male. That's the elite of I was talking about before. People say a goblin takes his stroll somewhere in the northeast of Ograne. Apparently he hates all goblins and wishes they were dead. Maybe it won't appear until all the other goblins are gone. Okay, so that only appears once we've done a thing with the goblins. Alright, moving on to this quadrant. We have not explored everything yet. Oh, because that bottom right. It's going to take forever until we find a way to reach it. There's a big treasure chest there. Also, a lot of stuff. And that's it. This is this huge uh, corridor. Can't do anything with that. I do want that treasure chest, though. Definitely, definitely want it. So, we'll finally walk through the middle path and reach the very top of the area. From there, we should be able to access that big chest. Who would have expected ruins so deep inside the granite? Whoa, what madness? What does it say here? By the gods, I knew it. These are didn't sink by any misfortune. These ruins are the proof. They serve as an entrance to the bottom of the crater. However, they were built in, in time before Niza's demise, so the builders knew exactly what would happen to Niza. Does that complete the job? We're not in Niza yet, silly. Silly. Wait a second, is that a hidden switch? Something happened. The gate opened. Which gate? I didn't see anything. There are three more gates. If the inscription here is to be believed, the switches are scattered all across Valandis. You're expecting us to find them all. Of course, money's not an issue. Do I really have to repeat myself? According to the text, there's a switch in Roland, the fire, the Fjordwoods, and Perpetua. What do you think, Glenn? Should we go through this trouble? We already travel a lot, so we might as well be on the lookout for these witches. Wonderful, then I'll wait here. You want to wait here? I think Glenn meant we're going to look for the switches on the side. That could take weeks or months. We may never find them. No problem. A practice of waiting is one of the virtues of any good scientist, so I wish you good luck. How are you going to survive in here with enough wood? Somehow I feel sorry for her. Maybe we should look directly after all. Except I think we already did. Didn't we? Yep. We can just go through. We already found all the switches. We found our first travel location. Cool. But before we examine the elevator, we're gonna go over here. Oh god, there's another one of those. Jeez. Is it down here? Please dump it down here. There we go. More crit damage up. Nice. And we also grab this. Ah, uh, this is gonna take a while to get. Uh, we're getting closer to the 96. No much rare, the rivers or mountains in our beautiful woods are the trees. They grow on every corner from the sturdy redwoods of the, on the peaks of Ramunda Mountains that defy all winds to the scrawny little trees of the Doma Desert that can go for months without water. All these trees are nothing more than children in the course of time, for their age rarely exceeds a thousand years. Every now and then, however, one finds an old one, a tree from bygone eras that has inherent magic. This generation of trees is often, but not always, very large. Well, no representatives of the Algarf tree on Shambhala or the Hay Lava tree in Valandis. However, no much is known about the oldest of the old ones. Moria, known as the Tree Without Memory or the Lonely Tree. Remember guys, every great RPG needs a single solitary tree, and this has one, even though we'll not see it. Our knowledge comes from legends, and these suggest that it stands in Pangaea, the northernmost continent populated only on the coast. 
As one of the ancients, Mori had a personality and the fear fear loneliness because the young trees around him no longer spoke his language. So through his magic, he tried to learn the one language that everyone spoke, the language of life, the ether. He dug his roots so deep that not only they penetrated the entire earth, but also broke through reality and plunged their, deeps, their tips into the ocean of the maelstrom. Since then, the old one searches the memory of the unliving and listens to their stories. And so we're apparently all connected to this single solitary tree. Is that supposed to be uh, like a Yggdrasil thing? Because, you know, the Yggdrasil is the world tree. And yada yada. That eh, could be. Could be a new version of the Yggdrasil myth. Tree that surrounds the, the like, kind of, you know, the tree where the world stands on. Does the Yggdrasil... This is locked from the other side. That does the Yggdrasil kind of keep? I think it keeps the world, right? I don't exactly remember it. Okay, so we're done here, right? There's a quest there. What? What's going on? Hang on. Okay, so those are the locations of the three levers, which we already examined, so we're good. We will take the elevator down. This view is amazing. Words fail me. The city has really sunk in one piece. The buildings are all standing, for the most part, that is. Up there, the wyverns fly, fly like a frock of birds. Combined with the fog, it's no wonder you can't reach Nisa via the crater. And somewhere down there, someone down there dwells Asnadiel. I'm so excited to see him. Are these true kings really that interesting? What are you saying, little one? Of course they are. They are the shortest... The, the shortest? Where did I read that? They are the strongest, most powerful creatures in all of Eldria. They can destroy whole cities within a few seconds. And they're all so mysterious. In Vati, there's a mountain that was famous for its twin wind caves. Strong winds flowed in and out. No explorer could enter the cave and come out alive. Either the wind pulled the explorers deep into the caves or it hurled them out of the mountain. It was not until a hundred years later that geologists found out that the mountain was not a mountain at all. Once they cleared all of its flora, its appearance became visible from a distance. He was in fact a true king. The ape Medioris Arbo, first true king, also called the meditating monk. The caves were nothing but his nostrils. He had been meditating for thousands of years, so he had become one with the environment. Fascinating, isn't it? The second true king is a boar that moves, moves through the world in almost straight lines, piercing a huge moat through the earth. Nothing can stop him, even a mountain is no obstacle, he simply bores his way through everything. People use his paths as tunnels. All villages must give way if the boar approaches them, his trenches are visible even from far up in the sky. The boar Grandolar, second true king, also called the Unwavered. Asnadel here is the third king. Since he's hiding here, we don't know much about him. The dragon Asnadel, third true king, also called the Undying Dreamer. We know even less about the fourth king, but once a century there's an incredible event. A voice resounds all over Eldria, speaking for several minutes in an unknown language. The voice sounds like a parrot repeating some words. Because of this immense ability, he was classified as a true king. What it looks like and where the voice comes from, no one knows. The parrot Ruan, the fourth true king, also called the Divine Voice. I do not need to introduce the next true king. We all see him when we look up in the in sky at night, or second moon. The Owl Luna Orbitness, fifth true king, also called the Watching Eye, or the Majora Mask Moon. That's sort of similar, I guess. A quick bit of trivia, airships only fly up to a certain altitude, but not because they can't technically go any higher, but because otherwise they're trespassing onto Luna's territory. He is quick to deal with intruders. No one has ever seen the main body of the next true king, but his work influences us all. He creates ebb and flow through his breathing. When he uses his tentacles, giant waves are created. The Kraken Wirelord, sixth true king, also called the Abyss. And the last in the line is quite special. It is not a single entity, but is made up of thousands of individuals. It is fast and unstoppable. It contaminates entire cities within a few hours.
The Rat Swarm Carmazinus, 7th through King, also called the Black Plague. Well, enough rambling, we're arriving. Hmm. What's wrong? This looks bad. The gate is locked and the key seems to be a complex mathematical puzzle. What do we do now? I'll have to solve it. It'll take days though. I'm slightly annoyed. Do you still need our help? Huh? Help? No, you're bothering me. Leave me alone. Here's your payment. Now go away. You sure you want to stay here? Have you got any... I hate to repeat myself. Get out of here. I can manage on my own. Something tells me she really can. What did we get from that? Money? Alright, also, spoiler, we are now have unlocked this part of the reward, board, which, which means this area is actually bigger than it seems. We're gonna have to go in there and it's gonna be actually a pretty huge area because it has all these objectives, right? Well, anyway, that is it for today. Next time there's another side quest, be prepared for that one.